uh, test runs you can now look at this and do the timed assessment. And I'm assuming no one will want to do timed assessment while in this next hour. So, uh, so when you're doing the timed assessment, uh, make sure you uh, hit the time to read the instructions. And uh, the amount of time you have is a pretty short amount of time. 10 minutes for 10 questions. It, and 10 questions, they, some of them are challenging. And uh, some of them are easy. Uh, they come from my physics tab. But um, so there's a range. So you do want to be ready. You do want to make sure you are in a setting where you won't be distracted. You can focus for those 10 minutes. So, um, and you don't want to use any of that time reading these rules, so read it now. It's open book, you can use textbook if you need to look up a formula. No outside the help. Um, so if you're having someone else do this for you, that's obviously not allowed. Um, and it, the three attempts are allowed really, um, well, I, normally I had two attempts a lot in case people had technical issues. And uh, that was my physics 10 rule. And with the physics 4B uh, and 4A, I made it to three attempts because, again, these questions are hard. So, um, so even without technical issues, um, sometimes you, know, you might throw uh, kind of 10 difficult questions and you might do worse than what your true level of understanding will show. So that's why it has three attempts a lot and it keeps the best score. So, um, and it seems to have worked reasonably well last semester, so I think I'm gonna keep that. So I've read all the rules. I feel like I understand enough of it to do it. <laughs> so I'll start and do And again, these questions are difficult enough that even for me, I'll have to make sure that I don't waste too much time. So for some of the questions, I might not explain things and just to move on. Because again, even for me, 10 minutes is a tight amount of time. So let me start. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna read any of that. That's my timer. Does it? It doesn't come down with me. Okay, I gotta watch this time instead. Okay. So question one: Well, mixed a couple pure, uh, always at zero degrees C. It has to do with the uh, uh, latent heat. So uh, yeah, melting of the ice cools the mixture. Cool. Um, um, yeah, that's one of the difficult questions. Um, so it's describing how heat specific capacity changes as a function of temperature. Um, is important, which does not. So at low temperatures, specific capacity decreases. So not a consequence. Christ that approaches taken can fluctuate by several degrees on this one. Yeah, so it can fluctuate by quite a bit because heat capacity is low, meaning it doesn't take a lot of heat to change the temperature. I think the rest are less of one time to the heat. Uh, oh wait, not a consequence. Wait, so this is a consequence. Yeah, that's why you gotta be careful. Um, it takes less amount to cool down this uh, and cool it down from, yeah, yeah, the lower temperatures, less heat is needed. Temperature, cold home temperature, less amount of liquid cool down, then the amount of liquid helium. Uh, that's just the difference between the two uh, two things. Uh, liquid nitrogen has greater enthalpy or you know, greater heat capacity. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is all. So this is the one that's not a consequence. <laughs> All right, uh, that one is a difficult question. If you wanna skip that, that's fine. That's a good test taking strategy. Temperature of sample uh, quadrupoles. Uh, this is where it's uh, helpful for you to remember that um, kind of internal energy thing, E int, uh, or the uh, average uh, kinetic, en or you know related to average kinetic energy, that's uh, three halves kBT. Uh, Per particle, I guess. Um, so, and kinetic energy is one half mv RMS squared. So there's a squared here. So if uh, you uh, increase the temperature by a factor of four, then the speed would uh, increase by a factor of two. Two squared will give you four. So that's that. Um, question four. Following our constant volume, specific capacity, two types of ideal gases. One have to make guess that, right, three for three um, translational degrees of freedom. Here are five for three translational plus two from the vibrational degrees. Okay, I mean, that's the reason for, yeah, and I think the explanation to go to that. 
but sometimes equally pertaining to not into each other, so that's wrong. Um, <laughs> second one, monotonic gas tends to be made of elements. No. I, once it's just time to talk about chemical energy, that's kind of where I'm making stuff up. Um, although many of, okay, that's just me making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> According to equipartition theorem, on, yeah, translational kinetic energy, that makes uh, it's a translational plus rotational. By the way, some of these questions are dynamically generated. So um, if you see this question, don't look for this as the correct answer. There might be another choice that's actually the correct answer, and you might not see this. Uh, so you know, go through the question like you're seeing it for the first time. Don't memorize the answers. Uh, PV diagram, yeah. So isochoric something, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Isobaric. This could be isothermal or adiabatic. So expansion A to B, pressure remains inversely proportional. Okay, so that must be isothermal. Um, so A to B, temperature remains constant, uh, but heat transfers. Um, so, you know, don't confuse isothermal with adiabatic. This is trying to combine the two, which is that guaranteed to be wrong. The amount of heat transfer between the heat engine and surrounding. It's the same regard. That's not correct. Path it, uh, heat transfer is path dependent. So I guess does work as it says to be. Temperature does not decrease because this condition means isothermal. <laughs> and the way the temperature doesn't decrease is because of the amount of heat transfer. That's equal to the work done. So that that's the the this correct description of isothermal process. Uh, question six, it is common in adiabatic expansions for temperature decrease, which are not good. So the, um, it's because gas is doing work. Um, first, uh, no, uh, it, no. <laughs> um, this also would describe isothermal. Um, volume increases. Uh, no, uh, ideal gas law has three dynamical quantities. You gotta fix one of them down. Uh, temperature decreases because it is not removed. Adiabatic, there's no heat transfer. Uh, yeah, gas does work. Uh, and this is tricky. You know, it doesn't wouldn't surprise me if a significant number of people choose one of these three. I uh, wrote the question to be difficult. Uh, they, they were not meant to be easy questions. Uh, sometimes people look down on multiple choice like this. Must be easy? Not always. <laughs> Single cycle uh, takes in this much heat and release that much heat. So energy is conserved, meaning the difference must have been do, uh, do, done as work. So 500 minus 350, that's 150. So it must have done 150 joule of work. Sometimes the questions are easy. I think this was a physics 10 question. Choose um, something which correctly compares and contrast heat pump with the refrigerator. Yeah, it's a tricky. Um, they look basically the same-ish, um, core operation-wise. The biggest difference is what their purpose is. Heat pump is trying to heat up the colder area. Refrigerator is trying to cool down the colder area. Wait, no, heat pump is trying to heat up the warmer area. <laughs> Refrigerator is trying to cool down the colder area. So, uh, smaller temperature, that doesn't sound right. I'm going to come back to that. That's too long. Heat pump uses input work to heat up the high temperature reservoir. That's right. Refrigerator uses input work to not heat up, but cool down. So that's not right. The input to put heat into the high temperature. Okay, good. He, to, to remove heat from the low temperature reservoir. Right. That is the distinction. Um, otherwise, you know, other than that kind of purpose-driven thing, they are more or less the same, you know, or... It could be the same. <laughs> so heat pump could be thought of as a refrigerator for the outside. <laughs> in a single cycle, heat engine operating between two thermal reservoirs takes in heat engine. Oh, 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 I see. So I gotta do some calculation. Uh, so uh, amount of work done is 150 joule. And in order to do that work, I had to pay in the amount of 400 joule of a high quality heat. So 37.5%, that is the efficiency. That's kind of the basic definition of efficiency. Carnot cycle is high. What is in the, starting from the stereo, the, at the highest temperature and pressure. Um, so I think, so it'll start out with expansion. Yeah, isothermal expansion, and it'll continue with the adiabatic expansion. And then it'll undergo isothermal compression, and then it, yeah, so it's this one. 
All right, I think I went maybe a little bit faster than I should have because I got two minutes left. Uh, let me just double check I answered everything. And I think I answered it correctly, but we'll see if I missed anything. Um, I always joke that it'll be embarrassing if I don't get 10 out of 10, but it's happened. Like, I think it happens one out of every five times that I miss one or two particularly tricky question. Not two, I've missed the one. I don't think I ever got an eight out of 10. That definitely would be embarrassing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so something in there. Good. Um, now, after you've done this, you should be able to uh, see your answer. So, uh, or, you know, see your work. So when you click on review work in Gradebook, so you will be able to see your own answers. Now, unless you got everything correct like me, um, <laughs> you won't. Uh, I don't think it even tells you which ones you got correct because I don't see any sign uh, which ones are correct. There might have been like a green check mark. I don't see that, so I don't even see that. So, um, so your own answers and the questions are available so that you can study, you know, with the time, look at outside resource, uh, ask me, and try to figure out which ones you got wrong. I do encourage you to do that. Like the three attempts you have, you shouldn't be using it one after another. The, the intent is that you should study in between. Um, and uh, I do think after the due date for this thing, I set it up so that it'll show you the answers after the due date. Let me just double check. Um, so settings, let's see. Uh, yeah, so you can view your scores, meaning like which ones you got right and wrong. And this used to be never, but I uh, gave you some thought and changed it to after the due date. So um, after the due date, after you've submitted, uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah, uh, after you've submitted and after the due date, you can see uh, both your scores and what the correct answer is. Um, for the versions of questions you got. And I guess, um, um, yeah, so two of the considerations that went to, I think uh, um, somehow if you're doing this after the due date using late pass, then I do have a record of who's using late pass. So somehow if you, people are using this particular loosening to cheat, then I have a ways to track that down. So I, I'm not worried about that, that's one. Two, um, these questions come from a huge pool of questions. Let me see uh, here at uh, the room of questions. Um, so the first group of two questions, they come from a pool of 22 questions. <laughs> Next group of two questions, they come from a pool of 15 questions. Next to group of three questions, they come from, okay, that's a smaller pool, but I think these were the harder questions, maybe, I don't know. So uh, th there's a fairly large ratio of the number of questions you get to the pool size. So any particular attempt will see only like uh, less than 20% of the available questions. So, so, you know, as you do your maybe three attempt, you will see that uh, maybe you get one or two questions that uh, you saw in your previous attempt that you get again. Oh, I can try this. Let me do this. I'm going to go back into student view. And if I do re-attempt and I won't actually finish it, you can see um, um, you can see how many of the questions that I've seen before comes back. Uh, so let me do retake. And, you know, right now I'm not really um, risking anything as test to student because I've already gotten 10 out of 10. No matter what I get here, my scored attempt will be 10 out of 10. Okay, so this question is new. This question is new. Uh, this question is new. Uh, this question, I think I've gotten it before. So, okay, I got so far one repeated question. Let me see, is it the uh, same? Yeah, same right answer. Okay, maybe this is not dynamic. Um, okay, this, I think I've seen this before. Let me see if it's the same right answer. Um, Let's see, incorrect. So I haven't seen this. Um, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. So, you know, I got two repeated questions, and I think it's a little bit clustered because I think both of these came from the same group. Uh, but, anyways, um, 
So that's a, I don't know. I guess I don't call that in explicitly an anti-cheat measure because it's not something that, uh, I mean, that was always my goal when I was putting together exams. Once you have large enough pool that, uh, I mean, so if there was a way I can make it available where it wouldn't be, okay, so I guess this would be the anti-cheat measure where um, I wish I could make this entire set of questions available. Except that if I did, then uh, somebody will try to basically memorize the answers, you know, get a tutor to do them all for you and memorize. Because of that, I'm not going to make the entire set of questions available. Uh, so that's the anti-chip part. But I, I think it's good for people to um, just uh, be exposed to different um, type of things. And in these assessments, I don't have to be comprehensive in what I test. That's why I'm okay just asking you 10 questions instead of asking you 40 questions using half of the pool. Um, because I think we do those 10 questions, and there's some range, you know. You don't need to get 10 out of 10 for an A-level attempt. 8 out of 10 is respectable. And so that's why, as a matter of good test-taking strategy, you should skip the hard questions. Um, so, um, and people who have studied physics and know the content, they really can't get 5 or 10 or below because there are enough easy questions that it's uh, uh, really unlikely that you will get five or more hard questions and one. <laughs> and if you were that unlucky once, you got two more attempts. So it's uh, statistically near impossible for someone to get that unlucky all three attempts. So, um, so, so yeah, that's the uh, multiple choice times assessment. And I think uh, I will probably do a demo for the free form timed assessment uh, next week. Because um, I do think it's good for me to do at least some of it. Because um, um, did I? I don't think I even, yeah. Because it, it, it's uh, hard to make my uh, solutions for previous exams available. So I haven't done that. So, so let me take some time next week to go through these.